Hi everyone, so today I'm going to be reviewing the top five 3D printing mistakes. These are all mistakes that I've made when I started my 3D printing journey, so you can learn from me and not make the same mistakes, including this one, which was pretty bad. Um, so I'll tell you all about these mistakes and teach you how to avoid them and how to have your printer settings uh, such that you're not going to end up with these type of mistakes. So let's take you through. Um, as you can see, I'm going to be using this Christmas ball as the demonstrator. So just wanted to show you how I got this Christmas ball. I got it from printables.com, which is a website where you can download 3D prints for free. Uh, I just um, searched the design, which I already knew the name for, but you can find featured designs on the website. And then I reviewed quickly the model and all the details about it, the description, license, that sort of thing. And then I clicked on download and was able to choose my file. There's a few different sizes here. So then what I did is I opened up my Elegu Cura. I have it set for the Neptune 3 Pro. And then I went to open file and um, I clicked on open recent and I was able to find that file that I had downloaded. It came off the bed, so I just right clicked on it and when you see I right click there then I clicked arrange all models and my model was placed right in the center of the build page and then I can go from there and I can click slice but I'm going to start off with my first 3D printing mistake which is not having the proper build plate adhesion so with this print example I'm going to show you an example of what happens when you print with no build plate adhesion you can see here that in that build plate adhesion section of the settings I've selected none there and so let's see exactly what happens, keeping in mind that this is a design where not much of the design is actually touching the build plate, which means it's going to be harder for it to stick to the build plate. So you can see here that it's starting, and there we go. It was on the build plate, but it very quickly moved off the build plate. It did not adhere, and now you're seeing some spaghetti string happening with my um, filament there. So this is a problem with this type of spherical design where you really need to use some adhesion method. So you can see here, this is what that piece of filament looked like after. So you can see that, that just that small little area touches the build plate and so it's very easy to slip off the build plate. So I'm going to show you how to fix that. You can see there that spaghetti string filament that's come off there. One of the things that you can do to improve adhesion is use a glue stick on your build plate. I know some people seem to not be a fan, but it does work and uh, it doesn't ruin your 3D prints or your build plate. Actually, Elegu sends this one with their 3D printers, uh, but you can just use any glue stick. It doesn't have to be the branded one. Um, it really does help to improve your build plate adhesion, and it's one of the methods you can use. The other thing, of course, you can do is adjust the settings. So you can see in here we have build plate adhesion and there's multiple options there's a skirt a brim or a raft typically we go with either a brim or a raft a brim is a layer of plastic around the bottom and then a raft is a full layer of plastic underneath the bottom so let's print it with a brim and see how that turns out so when we print with a brim here, you can see that we have nice adhesion as I do my um, time lapse video. And you'll see as I peel this off of the board, you can see I did put some glue stick on as well, that there's that tiny little brim of plastic around that just easily peels off. But that is what keeps it secure and keeps it from falling off and keeps it sticking. So this is really helpful to use a brim or a raft if you're finding that you're having difficulties with adhesion. And I also like the glue stick. Uh, don't hate me for it. It works. Okay, so now let's look at another common 3D printing mistake, which has to do with the temperature at which you print. Depending on which type of material you're going to use, you're going to want to set it at the ideal temperature for that material. So you hear, see here, I've got it set for PLA, which is the type of material that I'll use. And so it's set to a 200 degrees as the default setting for PLA, which is typically a perfect temperature. Well, let's see what happens when I go much higher than that, 260 degrees. Uh, that's not an ideal temperature for printing 
uh, PLA. So let's see what happens. It's a bit hard to see in my time lapse here, but let's get a close up and you can see all this stringing that happened. So that's one of the typical things that happens when you're printing at too high of a temp. You get tons of stringing, you can see there. It does not look very good. Now when I peel it off the board, I can get rid of a lot of that stringing. And so this would probably be somewhat salvageable. Um, I've certainly seen uh, printers that have done worse than this, but overall it's not a great quality print. And that's because the temperature is too high. Now let's look at our third 3D printing mistake, which has to do with making sure we have enough filament. So this is the filament that I've been using for this print. And uh, here's what happened when you actually run out of filament halfway through your print. So this is not ideal, especially if your print's been taking a long time. You end up with half a print there. Um, and of course, your print is essentially wasted and all that filament is wasted as well. Now you can see on the Elegoo that there is actually this square box at the top. This is pretty standard on many newer 3D printers, which is a filament detector, which shows that when you drop off your filament, it will actually pause the printing, which would allow you to potentially replace the filament and keep the print going. So that's a great feature to have on a 3D printer is this filament detector. A um, lot of the newer models do have that and can save you the grief of losing a print. Another common 3D printing mistake is not leveling your printer correctly. So my printer was perfectly level, but I just adjusted the settings. I leveled up and I adjusted the Z offset. And you can see that now my um, nozzle is not even touching the bed and it's just going to create this spaghetti mess if I continued it would probably create either lots of spaghetti or clog my nozzle so you have to level properly some 3d printers have an auto leveling feature uh, many require you to do this paper test you just use any piece of paper you can see I use my son's coloring here and you want the paper to be give a little bit of a tug so that was too loose you could see it was very easy to move under the nozzle now that's too hard, I can barely pull it. So I need to go somewhere in between those. So I'll go one more up. And that one, it's hard to obviously see just visually, but I can feel a little bit of a tug, but it's not so hard that it's stuck. So that's the perfect setting. And that's how you level your 3D printer. Finally, the final mistake, which is the worst mistake that I've had so far with my 3D printer, has been not watching the 3D print. So this is a print that I left overnight. I turned it on, hoped for the best. I think I did watch the first layer, and then I woke up this morning in the morning with this is my nozzle. You can see it's just a complete mess, crazy filament clog here. Uh, that just kept going and going and this nozzle was totally not salvageable. So the good news is that with Elegoo I was able to easily replace it. Um, actually I think the technical support replaced it for free which was amazing because this was early on in my printer. Now I have this camera here. This is what's creating those cool time-lapse videos. It's called the Beagle Cam. I'll link it in the comments. It actually controls the 3D printer so I can check on my 3D prints remotely and turn them off if there's been an error. So that's pretty cool. Some 3D printers will have AI detection for errors or other types of cameras, but Beagle Cam has been great for me to avoid that uh, mistake without having to watch them all the time. So I hope you enjoyed uh, this review of my top five 3D printing mistakes. Um, hopefully this video was helpful for you. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you're interested in more 3D printing and tech videos.